ninth episode of the BPD Bunch Brunch, where we get together with our favorite brunchy beverages to catch up, play games, and talk about all things BPD. I'm your host, Zanny, and today I'm here with Lena, Katya, Madurama, Selene, and Sophie. What's your brunchy beverage? Um, well, I have electrolyte water because... I ruined my body with lots of brunchy beverages before, and it can't tolerate much. <laughs> ah, gotcha. I'm, I'm just got my orange juice. I have made use of my Nespresso machine. Um, I am one of those people now with a Nespresso machine, so I've been putting that to good use, and I have a pumpkin cake latte. That sounds nice. amazing. Wow. <laughs> I have like good old coffee. Um, I have apple juice. Yeah, I've just got water because it's not really brunch time here. We're pretending. It's brunch somewhere. It's brunch somewhere. <laughs> so this week we are talking about intense anger and we decided to play a, a version of Never Have I Ever, except that instead of the person who is like saying the thing, since so many of us have done the things, it's going to be more just like, never have I ever, but actually I have, and who else has done this with me? <laughs> but that, but that's too long of a game title to put in the game, so we're going to play it the way that one would play never have I ever, just for you viewers to know, like, when I say never have I ever, I'm probably putting my finger down. <laughs> Never have I ever admitted to doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing, I, I guess, all ten hand, uh, all Yeah, ten well, let's do all, all ten fingers. Yeah. Never have I ever smashed a wall out of anger. Punched or smashed? It says smashed, punched, but I maybe? would say, like, hit, probably hit a wall in anger. Yeah, I put, I put a <laughs> hole in it. I had to get someone to come fix it. <laughs> Yeah, I hit the wall. I don't think I've smashed it, but I've definitely hit walls. So, yeah. yeah, I didn't expect, like, when I did it, I didn't expect the wall to <laughs> not be strong enough. <laughs> Anyone watching, don't get any hints. Please do not try this at home. <laughs> yeah, we're not advocating for this behavior. No. It's like a remembering the times. The next one is never have I ever. Oh, my already was finger down. Never have I ever insulted a family member. Oh yeah. I am. I. I have definitely insulted. They deserved them. it though. <laughs> <laughs> my family is just full of uh, traumatized people with diagnosed or undiagnosed BPD. So. I told my partner, like, I come from a pack of wild animals, so when I get angry, it's really hard to know how to express it in a healthy way, because I have to, like, undo all the 30-plus years of learning. I have definitely insulted family members. Um, the closer that they are to me, the more venom. Sophie, I don't know whether or not you agree, but in the UK, there's kind of, like, Almost like it's acceptable to insult your family members as like British humour type thing. And I tend to find that, especially with my brother, we have that very kind of bantery relationship. But then sometimes I will find that I kind of wrap up insults in that kind of banter. And then right. it sort of leads to, you know, like insults and going too far. So in African culture, you do not insult, like, especially elders, you, you just don't do that. When I'm pushed too far and I've had enough, then I will really snap and blow. Not my finest hours, but hey ho, if you push a button, something's going to happen, right? And our family, you know, they created our buttons, so they know how to press them better than anybody else. Yep. Okay, so is it my turn? Mm-hmm. Right, okay, let me just have a look. So, slapped someone to end an argument. I have not slapped anyone to end an argument, but I have slapped someone because I was mad. It was so fast. Like, I don't think I even registered it after I had done it. And like two seconds after doing it, I was so ashamed and I was so horrified that Oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. 
So, um, never have I ever stormed off before boiling over. I have. Um, does that mean like stormed off like in a really big, like huff? Yeah. I think it counts. It's interesting because I feel like this one is like, can be both used in an effective and an ineffective way. Mm. Because like, mm. there are times when... When, like, I know I'm going to say something horrible or worse if I don't, mm -hmm. like, leave. And and because I'm already, like, so dysregulated, it's not like I can, I, I can take the moment to say, hey, I need to walk out and I'll be back. It's like, I just peace them out. And, and I think, like, while that's not the most effective I could be, it's definitely more effective than the alternative. However, I have also been, like... I can't do this right now. And I can tell that there's an air of dramatics to it where it's like, 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 don't follow me, but please do kind of, kind mm -hmm. of aspect to it. I, I definitely agree that I think I use this now in like a really effective way, um, you know, of like, okay, I just need a minute to walk away before I say or do something that I'll regret. Um, and I have used it in the past as a way to sort of like, you know, get attention or, or, you know, make the other person stop saying what they're saying or doing what they're doing as like, you know, uh, I can't do this. I, I'm walking away. I'm avoiding this conflict or whatever. Yeah. Kind of making the other person sit with it rather than dealing with it versus effectively disengaging with the intention of coming back to like deal with it later. I think for me, it can sometimes be quite unhealthy because it's almost now my go-to in certain situations if I can see that things are escalating there might be a confrontation I am immediately straight out of the door and it makes me feel really frustrated because sometimes I think actually I need to stand there and have that confrontation to put my point across and be assertive and it's almost like now it's a habit to run away from that kind of confrontation when really I should probably be standing up for myself. So for me, I kind of have a little bit of a different take on that because I am generally quite a non-confrontational person and maybe actually I need to be a bit more confrontational. Yeah, that's an important point. It's hard sometimes to find that balance. I think I've definitely walked away um, both when it's supposed to be effective to save any kind of the relationship or whatever and um I've also walked away because it just got too much and I don't know how I would behave if I stayed in the situation um and also out of fear definitely have removed myself because I didn't want to freeze there and just be you know a deer in the headlights so I left <laughs> and so it is my turn to say the next one so up with your hands everybody <laughs> Uh, what's the next one? Uh, use anger to cover one or several other emotions. And I actually wrote that one. And this is something that I discovered personally in therapy. You know how you have pots and pans. So I have all my pots and pans and they were full of sadness, full of water, full of tears. And anger was the lid. And the lid was so tight around it. Oh, so tight. And so as soon as sadness would come up or I would be upset with something, you, you would just get anger, frustration, lashing out. But then once we worked through a lot of that anger, there was, whoa, whoa, waves. It was like being in the ocean. <laughs> the pots were open. I'm there, you know, a little me in a big pot, like, ah so much sadness in here um so yeah i don't know does it can anyone relate like 100 percent 100 percent. we spent so much of the last episode talking about anger as a secondary emotion because i mean it is a primary emotion but like at least for me in the way that it's come out in bpd has been primarily in in the intense like irrational level it's almost always secondary i don't feel like i'm as irrational when it's a primary emotion it's like it's out of because I think because because it's trying to keep a lid, like you said, on something else, why it's so big. And, you know, Katya was talking about um, it being ineffective to, like, walk away from conflict for her when she should stand up for herself. And I'm noticing that in myself a lot more now that I'm not having the anger response because the anger response was really the only one that I felt safe to have with people. 
if I am vulnerable and I feel shame and guilt or sadness or fear, that is when I feel like somebody could just poke me and my heart would explode, you know? Yeah. And that, and that, mm-hmm. and that is why I think why I now sometimes have a hard time and will do what Katya said, where it's like, all right, nope, I'm out of here. Cause being there and being effective and being vulnerable with people facing the prospect of them still not being able to meet me where I am. That terrifies me of like feeling shame in someone's presence and having them not validate that. Like I'm okay if they're not okay with my anger, that makes sense to me. But, uh, the other, the other part that I I have a really hard time handling that. I can really relate to what you guys have said. Um, so Lynn and Zanny, um anger is definitely a secondary emotion a lot of the time uh you know like there's the iceberg and the tip of the iceberg is anger but underneath the water there's loneliness there's sadness etc etc so for me it's definitely been a way to avoid feeling vulnerable you know like screaming out don't leave me (laughs) but at the time it doesn't come out like that it comes out as anger and me really attacking the other person but What I really want is for them to probably, like, hold me. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) So, the next one. Get your fingers out, ladies. I only have one (laughs) hand left. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, Put a finger down if you felt it, felt anger for no apparent reason. I think I could tell the reason now, but I have had times in the past where, like, I would feel it and not understand why. Oh, yeah. Especially understanding vulnerability factors, like hormones, lack of sleep, lack of food. That's, for me, not eating is a huge one. To be honest, I actually agree with you. A lot of it is kind of food-related. So one thing that springs to mind is that when we moved into our new house, we had a party, and because... I'm vegan, my husband made these vegan sausage rolls and in the time it took me to go to the toilet and come back, they'd all been eaten and I was absolutely furious. I was like, those were my vegan sausage rolls. (laughs) And I was just so angry and it was just so irrational and so silly. But I definitely get the food thing when it comes to being angry for basically no reason at all. Uh, In English, you have the word uh, hangry, which is like hungry and angry together. And when I learned that word, I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) This makes total sense because I get like that. Sometimes I don't realize even that I'm hungry, but I get angry for small things. And then I'm like, oh, I think I need to eat something. (laughs) I think this might be happening. Um, Anger is often an an indication of hunger for me before hunger is. Especially now working on the show, I spend so much time like editing videos, doing this stuff. I won't like eat for a long time and I don't even notice that I'm hungry because I'm so focused. And then all of a sudden someone will come in and talk to me and I'll be like, what do you want? And they're like, (laughs) it's usually my husband and he's like, I think it's time for dinner. I'm like, okay. Oh. Yeah, I think so. I think if he's watching this, okay, every time you come and interrupt, come with a muffin and just stuff it in your face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> just tame, tame. That would be amazing. <laughs> All right, it's Lena's turn again. Never yeah, have I, I ever I... been angry at myself. Really? I mean, um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep where do you even stop <laughs> right yeah I feel like I've had to learn how to have more self-compassion you know around mistakes and, and things you know because uh my go-to state would be to be angry at myself you know when you know mistakes are part of learning been angry at me oh my gosh I'm angry at myself at least four times a day even now you know um I just get really mad at myself when I can't do something that seemingly like neurotypical people can do. Like sometimes I really try to tell myself, you're just making it up, like gaslight myself. I don't, I I try not to do that as much now. Um, But I think sometimes, yeah, like I get angry with me and I have to really work hard to think of, yeah, compassionate, things like com- compassionate words for myself to get through that anger so yeah it's, it's a struggle 
every day oh, but i'm so better at it because i don't lay in my bed for the whole day anymore so it shows something's working i highly recommend going to a, a rage room or whatever they're called where you can just like pay to like break stuff <laughs> probably one of the that. best experiences of my that. life um so my sister has actually paid to go to a rage room and i really want to go with her but i'm like where's the rage room when the rage is raging do you know what i mean like yeah. am I supposed to save it in a in a cup and drink it and then smash things because you, you know or when I'm there am I supposed to go and this is for that time like you know? that's how I did it otherwise <laughs> okay, give me I burned through my on how, to, how to navigate a rage room when I'm not raging yeah yeah you just gotta stuff yeah you gotta stick in a bottle and then carry it with you and then just go there. Isn't that what like, we've right, done for years? I'm scheduling it after. Just yeah, inhale it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds very cathartic. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it really I, I, I felt so. Katja, it's your turn. Okay, so never have I ever channeled it into other activities such as exercise, activism, jumping off a plane. I did jump off an airplane at a time where <laughs> it was a time where I felt really empty, like, like complete, like nothing, like just, just nothing, you know, just felt nothing, numb, numb to everything because the emotion, it was just, I was suppressing everything. There was nothing. And uh, we went to New Zealand and there was the opportunity to uh, skydive and I was like I'm terrified of heights by the way like absolutely terrified and I was like yeah yeah let's do it and I have rarely felt so alive in my entire life so yeah I would highly recommend it if you're into this kind of stuff um so yeah I've definitely never jumped off a plane I would really like to though um for other activities I tend to do a lot of things like running things that are quite high energy things like boxing anything really that is a distraction. So when I'm feeling angry, I will try and do something that's quite physical to take away from what's going on in my mind. And it's more that kind of like physical outlet for what I'm feeling. Um, so yeah, for me, definitely exercise is one of them. I definitely feel like after I've exercised, it really calms me down and I'm guessing there's some kind of like chemical reason for that. I'm not sure of the science behind it. But for me, that is probably singularly the best thing that I can do when I'm experiencing anger. Yeah, same. I joined gym for the first time because I was always super angry and anxious. And it helped with both. I mean, whenever I was having the physical manifestations of anxiety which came as a sequel of how angry I was feeling or how not in control of my emotions I was so I used to go to the gym and I used to work out a lot and it really helped uh, working out has like a really positive experience on your body uh, when you're like you know because it replaces the wrong chemicals with the right ones basically to put it simply so it's like a very positive outlet and healthy i can really relate katya and madurima um i am well at this point i think i'm an avid gym goer but um it definitely i will walk in the gym with just so much on my mind and anger and all of that and i literally leave it there i come out and i've got a massive spring in my step it just, like, at this point, it's medicine. It's, it's therapy, guys. Anyone who's listening who wants to start a fitness journey, please do it. You will just thank yourself because, yeah, the endorphins be endorphining. Okay, so I'm going to go with this. Um, never have I ever self-harmed as a result of feeling anger. That's and then there was one piggy. I am done. <laughs> I got a done. Zero. To wrap it up, I think I've changed my relationship with anger and that's really helped. And I've understood that anger is really a message that is talking to me about my values and what matters to me. And actually it can be really helpful 
and I'm really passionate about diversity, about inclusion, uh, about equity and, you know, making a difference for, for people and, and for the world. And that anger, it's really channeling that into a positive way to be like fighting injustice you know and to be showing me like okay someone here crossed a line as well and and so i see it much more like that and i've i would say almost like became friends with my anger now and i'm like hello i know you <laughs> and um and how can we work together and in a way that is constructive working with my anger um you know it's a messenger to tell me about what needs to be healed still and um, to confront it with some sort of kindness and um, to also like understand that when I'm angry, I can be my observer self. Like I don't need to step into that emotion and feel it and react. I can just watch it and say, okay, why, why are you feeling like this? You know, to really question it and just, yeah, be, be a fence sitter so to speak with anger and all my emotions but anger specifically like allowed it to you know be there and experience it while not letting it drive the bus so to speak you know like i want my i don't want to shove it in the trunk but i i don't want it in charge you know because when i get angry and i act out of anger i can do things i regret and so yeah. you know i've also allowed it to be a really effective tool, you know, like, um, I think there's sort of a gift in being really scary when I'm angry, you know, because I can protect myself verbally very well. I was walking down the street uh, in San Francisco the other day, and I was talking to my boyfriend on the phone, and we were talking in Portuguese. And I think, you know, out of some xenophobia or racism or whatever, this woman walking past thought it was okay to make comments about me talking in Portuguese on the phone. And I think she didn't realize that I could understand her because I'll speak English. So I literally took the phone down and I was like, oh, you have some something to say? Why don't you come back here and say that to my face? And she was like so freaked out that she walked off. And I, you know, I think there's a there's a benefit in being able to really strongly express anger like in a moment you know i can protect myself i just don't want to use that as my only tool you know <laughs> yeah being in control of it right <laughs> yeah i actually kind of felt for a really long time that i was abnormal because when i'm angry i don't necessarily show that i'm angry um it will be inside and it will be that horrible kind of burning anger where it makes you shake and you have the red mist descend, but people often couldn't tell. And because it was so internalized, that's part of the reason why I struggled for so long to get a BPD diagnosis, because I don't necessarily present or show the symptoms of BPD in a way that people instantly recognize. And I think what I'm gonna take from today is actually sometimes it's okay to let it out and to be angry as long as you do it in a productive way. And I think for me, like I'm probably gonna go straight from this interview and just go and maybe smash something and see what it feels like because <laughs> I don't because <laughs> it's not something that I normally do. So I think for me, it's gonna be about actually trying to express it more rather than repressing it. So yeah, sort of an, an unexpected end to this conversation. <laughs> That's yeah. so amazing. I'm so excited. Yeah, so glad you shared that. <laughs> There's a very fine line between aggression and assertion. Yeah, it's a struggle, but it's also doable because with the skills that we talked about, I mean, I have come a long way of, you know, lashing out at people and like taking out my emotions in a negative way to finally be here to be able to sit down and listen to myself and like Sophie pointed out like talk it out with myself and be rational and explain things to me as if I am my own friend and it's very powerful and liberating to be able to do that and not being controlled by my BPD self like oh my god things are not going your way so you just have to blow it out of proportion so yeah that's a very powerful feeling that your BPD self is not anymore in control of you. But yeah, I think um, something that I am also learning is that we can 
be assertive without being angry or aggressive. And sometimes like that little flame in us, it has to keep burning, you know, just to light because it's hard enough as it is for us in this world. So as Andrea says, there's a light that never goes out. <laughs> it's out. Yep. Smiths. <laughs> Um, thank you everyone so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single episode of our shenanigans. We will see you next week for our very last episode of this season, which is our bonus episode on dissociation. So we will see you then. Bye! Bye-bye.